What's up, man? Hey, guys. Is that Lindsay again? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure you are handsome. Oh, thank you, Laura. <laughs> Saw you coming. All right. Let's see here. We'll make sure we got a good space. Hopper, you're kind of in the way. But <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> might add some charm, right? There she is. Nice. Hopper knows that you're trying to do something. Beautiful. Special. So what's the uh, what's the story on it? So this guitar came from uh, a customer of ours who had um, purchased it at a pawn shop when he was working for Georgia Power in like 1960 in high school. And to his reckoning, he's the second owner okay. because it's a 65. It was 66 when he bought it. And uh, he was in a little group, you know, in like uh, his high school band and stuff like that. And so um, that was his guitar, but then it kind of went unused for a long time. He's kind of a primarily acoustic guy, mm -hmm. and uh, he traded it in here like some years ago, and uh, I guess 2017 maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw it for what it was. It was just a freaking killer guitar. The, the weight is what really kind of caught my attention. Yeah, and it was super resonant acoustically. So um, I, it never made it to the sales floor. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I and kinda, it still hasn't. Uh, it's it's the kind of vintage guitar I look for, which is, you know, first of all, it's a great tool, super instrument, but it's also, you know, got really well established provenance and uh, it's very clean. You know, so you know, I, I think Joe Baramasa said it really well in one of his videos, uh, where you don't look at these things necessarily as investments. You just buy a great tool, mm -hmm. and uh, usually that retains value. Yeah. But uh, so I think this guitar definitely falls into that category. Yeah, you yeah. can't go wrong with one pickup. Hopper likes it. <laughs> so let's get this guy up here. So this is the weight. Yeah, it weighed in about 5.86 pounds. Um, super light, but more importantly, balanced. Yeah. You know, it's a. Uh, you know, some of these guys can sometimes feel neck heavy in some cases, or body heavy, depending on the density of the, the slab. Got the common pick guard chip with these. Uh, there wasn't a lot of material north of that screw. Yep. So they often crack there. No headstock break. No headstock break also, or body break, you know. Yeah. With SGs, depending on the tenon, you know, you can sometimes see breaks here because there's not a lot to support them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice wear down here too. Yeah, this is what I call honest wear. <laughs> you know, we got a little bit of uh, booger in here on the side. You know, very often in my experience, this comes from people leaning things in the corners. Yeah. You know? Right. Uh, same with uh, tuning machines. Often you'll see bent tuners due to uh, people just leaning in the corner. It's always the D or the G. It was it loved. And uh, the romantic in me still feels like that rubs off, right? Like there's still some little essence of somebody's passion in this guitar yeah and uh especially with older ones I, I really sense that kind of the red violin syndrome so truth be told this is the second time i've looked at this guitar uh the first time it came we actually cracked the back plate open because i wanted to see the pots uh, make sure the pot dates matched up with the the date of this guitar and this is one of the things that i think you should be looking for if you're looking at an old guitar specifically an old electric guitar uh, check the pot dates check the electronics uh, and this one looks pretty clean. Yeah, here we go inside. What was really unfortunate, uh, Rhett and I struggled with this the other day, is that the pot code is just like exactly covered up by <laughs> this uh, this uh, jumper right here. And over here, it's uh, once again covered up, but we did manage to just barely lift that ever so slightly. And we can see 137 for CTS and then a six and just the very edge of the five. The light here is not so good for that, but uh, it is, as far as we can tell, original 65 pots. But I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll take a moment to pull this pickup too, just to show what, what it looks like underneath there. Of course, a legendary dog ear P90, you know, a true rock monster. So once again, we can see very original looking solder joints. Can you, you got a good angle on that, man? There, right. There we go. Yep. Yeah. You can also see, uh, if you care to look, good demonstration of the fact that these were originally kind of entry level guitars and 
the uh, cut not so refined. Yeah, <laughs> definitely done by hand somebody, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What do we want to play through? Damn, he's enjoying this Gibson. Well, let's do that. GA40 through the. This is a slide guitar, 100%. Oh, and more. Yeah. Yeah, but this, it just like, ah, man. It, it's that. The bridge pickup and the combination of everything, especially the slightly heavier strings, which I'm always yeah. a proponent of on Gibsons, you yeah. know, but uh, regardless, it's just gonna be a really, really well-composed, sustained note on treble. So, uh, why are you selling it? As is always the case, you know, you got another one on the horizon. So, in my case, it's uh, acoustic guitars that really drive me a lot. So, there's a, what we might call Holy Grail of Martin in the office that as prompting me to divest myself of a number of guitars. I know Rhett can uh, uh, share my uh, sorrow on that, but sometimes, you know, you just gotta sacrifice something to make something really wonderful come to fruition, so. Can we, uh, can we see it? Absolutely. Okay, let's go check it out. So, this is my first vintage instrument. I've never owned a vintage guitar before this one. I've played plenty of them. I've known friends that have really great vintage pieces, and. Like my friend Lindsay was saying in the video, I tend to see guitars more as tools, and uh, this is a very good tool. 
I feel incredibly lucky and fortunate to be able to own this guitar uh, and to be a sort of steward or custodian of it for the next, hopefully, 50, 60 years of its life. Now there's another element to this story, which is the reason that Lindsay was selling this guitar, which is to buy a very special vintage instrument. And we actually shot a whole other video there um, of the guitar that Lindsay wants to buy and the other guitars from his collection that he's selling to get it. Now, I don't typically do this kind of thing. I don't typically do like part two videos on this channel, but we're gonna do that today. So. Be sure to subscribe. The next video in this series is gonna come out in the next few days. So if you're watching this and you like this type of video, leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified when this next video is going live. As far as this SG Junior, you're gonna be seeing this and hearing this guitar a lot on the channel uh, in the coming months and years. So that's gonna do it for today. My name is Rhett Shull. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember there is no plan B.